Hello again. Uh, now we're going to review the second uh, chapter of the financial markets and institutions, uh, which is about bond markets. So let's define bonds. Uh, uh, as you know, companies may satisfy their financing needs either by debt, issuing debt or equity instruments. In fact, bonds are fixed income debt instruments issued to finance long term financing needs of companies, governments or government corporations. A buyer of bonds receive periodic interest payments and par value of the bond at maturity. We also call this par value nominal value. And uh, we call these periodic interest payments coupon payments. The coupon rate uh, of bonds refl reflects the credit worthiness of the issuer, the riskiness of the bond. So the greater the riskiness, the greater uh, the coupon rate or the uh, lower the credit worthiness, the higher the, uh, the coupon rate tends to be. There could, see, there, there could be some different types of bonds, uh, such as government bonds or corporate bonds. Government bonds are issued by governments and public sector bodies, whereas corporate bonds are issued by corporations. Uh, there are some bearer, bearer bonds in, in which the owner is the person who holds it, where the owner is the person holding the uh, bond. And uh, in for registered bonds, uh, we can say the registered bond contains the name of the owner. So it, it, it's not something related with holding the bond. It is uh, issued uh, with the name of the owner. There are other types of bonds, such as st straight coupon bonds uh, or zero coupon bonds. Uh, straight coupon bonds provide the holder to receive periodic coupon payments and principal at maturity, whereas zero coupon bond holders buy the bond at a discounted price and are paid par value at maturity, so there are no coupon payments. The payments of deep debenture bonds depend on the general credit strength of the issuer. The payments of secured bonds are secured by a pledge asset of the issuer. issuer. Um, we can also define euro bonds and foreign bonds and uh, emphasize their differences. A euro, bond is a, a euro bond is a bond denominated in a currency different from the currency of the country where the bond is issued. Whereas a foreign bond is a type of bond that is issued by a foreign company or government denominate, denominated in the currency of the country where they are sold. So foreign bonds are uh, issued uh, at the currency of the country they are issued, whereas euro bonds are denominated, denominated in a currency different from the currency of the country they are issued. Uh, there could be some floating rate bonds, callable bonds and puttable bonds, as well as index linked bonds and convertible bonds. You can refer to the details of, of these type of bonds in the book. Um, so how about the value of a bond? How can we determine the value of a bond? In fact, the value of a bond is equal to the sum of the present value of the future ca cash flows that the bondholder expects to receive. So we're uh, talking about uh, the economic value or the intrinsic or the real value of the bond. So remember, the cash flows of a bond uh, include coupon payments as well as the par value or the nominal value at maturity. So we need to discount uh, those uh, cash flows in order to find the present values of these cash flows. And the discount rate that will be used in the bond valuation, uh, in fact, reflects the risk premium uh, of, of these bonds, which is the uh, rate of return above the risk-free rate. Remember, the risk-free rate is the uh, rate of return of government bonds. Uh, since uh, corporate bonds have a higher risk, they, they need to offer a, some return above the risk-free rate, and we call this difference the risk premium. The coupon rate of government bonds, uh, as I mentioned, uh, is the risk-free rate, and uh, the return above this uh, rate, uh, rate is the risk premium. Uh, the risk premium reflects economic, indus economic, industrial, and firm-specific risks. So the greater the risk, the greater the risk premium, and the greater uh, the discount rate. Uh, so there are some different uh, definitions of bond yields. Uh, 
we say that the, the nominal yield of a bond is the coupon rate of the bond. The current yield of a bond is calculated by dividing the coupon payment to the current price of the bond. The price of the bond may be different from the nominal value or the par value. So in order to, uh, to find the current uh, yield, we, uh, we divide the coupon payment to the price of the bond. And, uh, an important term is the yield to maturity. In fact, yield to maturity is, is, a, is, is, a, is some rate of uh, is some interest rate which equates the present value of the future expected cash flows remember the present value of future expected cash flows is the real value of the bond so we find this real value and we search for some discount rate which makes the real value equal to the price of the bond so it is the, the yield to maturity is the rate that equates the present value of the future expected cash flows or the real value of the bond equal to the bond price. Uh, yield to call, on the other hand, is the rate that equates the present value of the future expected cash flows to the price plus the accrued coupon payments, the payments which have been accrued. Um, in fact, you can uh, think of the yield to maturity as the rate of return that the investor will obtain if if he or she holds the bond until maturity. So it's like an expected rate of return. And in fact, uh, you, we can also compute the yield to maturity of a bond by computing the internal rate of return of a bond. Uh, for the bonds sold at par value, so if, uh, I mean, if the price of the bond equals the par value, uh, we, we, we can say that the yield to maturity is in fact equal to the coupon rate. But for the bonds sold at a discounted price, um, I mean, if the price of the bond is below the par value or the nominal value, then we say the yield to maturity or the expected uh, rate of return of the bond is uh, higher than the coupon rate, higher than the coupon rate. Why? The price is discounted. There's a, there's a higher expected return. And uh, on the contrary, for the bonds sold at a premium price, meaning if the price of the bond is uh, above the par value, we can say that the yield to maturity is something smaller than the coupon rate. Why? Because the price is greater than the nominal value. So the expected return is something smaller than the coupon rate. Um, there are some risks associated with uh, making bond investments. And the uh, most important of them is uh, the, the default risk. But uh, we, the bond investors are also, are also exposed to interest rate risk, reinvestment risk, inflation risk, and sometimes currency risk. Default risk is the risk, the risk that the borrower will, will, the borrower will fail to make, meet the obligations. So the issuer, if the issuer cannot uh, pay the, cannot make the cash, uh, cash flows, cannot uh, fulfill the uh, cash flows promised by the bond, if the issuer goes bankrupt, we can, uh, we can, consider uh, that there is a default risk. So bonds with a high default risk uh, are accepted as speculative bonds. In fact, credit rating agencies evaluate uh, or assess the default risk of bonds and they uh, accordingly they rate these bonds. So they give a certain rating. They assign a certain rating depending on the default risk and the credit worthiness of issuers. The possibility that the rating of the issuer or instrument to be downgraded is called downgrade risk. So if the credit worthiness of the issuer deteriorates or if the default risk of the bond increases, uh, there, there could be some downgrading and we call this downgrade risk. 
The interest rate risk is also an, an important uh, risk associated with bonds. In fact, bond prices have an inverse relation with market interest rates, meaning if market interest rates rise, bond prices uh, will accordingly uh, fall down and vice versa. Uh, so there is an inverse relationship. Um, and the, the second relationship uh, about interest rates and bond values uh, tells us that as the maturity of a bond increases, the price, volatility, the price volatility of the bond increases, which means longer, uh, longer term bonds have a higher interest rate risk. They are more uh, sensitive to changes in market interest rates compared to short term bonds. So if there is a change in the market interest rates, the, the change in the price of long, long term bonds are greater than short term bonds. And another important risk is the reinvestment risk. Um, as bondholders uh, um, receive the coupon payments, they desire to reinvest those cash flows. And there is a possibility that the investor may, in, may reinvest the money at a lower rate. Why? The, by the time uh, bondholders receive those coupon payments, the market interest rates may have uh, fallen down, so there are uh, less favorable investment opportunities for the bondholders. So reinvestment risk is high for callable bonds. Why? Because uh, the nominal values uh, are paid to the bondholders uh, before the maturity, so they are exposed to reinvestment risk. Uh, inflation also affects the real return of the investments uh, because uh, inflation uh, deteriorates the purchasing power of bondholders. And uh, bondholders may also be prone to currency risk, uh, which, uh, which is the potential loss arising from changes in exchange rates. If the, if the, if the bonds are in a foreign currency, foreign exchange, then uh, we can talk about some currency risk. Another uh, important concept about bonds is the duration. Duration, we can uh, define duration as the average time needed to receive the principal, uh, the principal uh, which is in fact the par value of the bond, and the coupon payments of the bond. So the average time needed to uh, receive the cash flows of the bond. It is in fact calculated by multiplying uh, t with the present the, the the time the timing of the cash flows with the present value of each cash flow and dividing it to the sum of the present value of these cash flows. So we need to compute the uh, present value and then multiply that those uh, present value of the of each cash flow with the with t time the timing of the cash flow, and then divide, uh, divide it to the sum of the present value of the cash flows. In fact, duration measures sensitivity of the bond to changes in interest rates. How sensitive is the price of the, uh, is the, price of the bond to changes in interest rates? It, it, so it reflects, duration reflects this sensitivity. And we can say duration decreases when the interest rates increase. Uh, whereas uh, the duration of a bond with higher coupon rate is shorter compared to bonds with uh, lower coupon rates. So the greater the coupon rate, the shorter the duration. The greater the interest rates, uh, the shorter the duration. As we had mentioned before, uh, Credit rating, uh, bond rating is important for uh, bond investors. And credit rating uh, indicates the default risk. It reflects the default risks, uh, risk of the issuer. Issuers want to have credit ratings uh, in order to increase the market marketability of their bonds. So if they receive a higher credit rating, they are more likely to market their bonds. Uh, 
And credit rating agencies also provide information about the downgrade risk, as we had mentioned before. Bonds with higher ratings are considered safer, safer than the lower rated bonds because uh, the issuers are considered more credit, uh, credit worthy. If the credit quality of the issuer improve, uh, of the issuer improves, the agency upgrades the rating and vice versa. If the credit quality deteriorates, the agency downgrades the rating. The rating agencies also modify the ratings by additional exp expressions such as positive, developing, stable, or negative. And that was all for chapter 2.